and welcome to Cutlery Cavern. Today I am going to look at the M3 trench knife. The M3 trench knife is probably one of the most collected knives from the World War II period. It was made in 1943 and a little bit in 1944 before being superseded by the M4 um, bayonet. The M4 bayonet lived on over the years, finally ending as the M7 bayonet for the M16 rifle. The um, M3 trench knife itself is probably one of the most collected knives from World War II simply because of its short time being issued. It was made for the M1 carbine and when they put a bayonet lug on the carbine they started making the M4 bayonet instead. It was principally supposed to be issued to anyone who did not get issued a bayonet. So that meant that people were given the 45, the carbine, BAR gunners, machine gunners, cooks, so on and so forth. Um, however, according to my father, the knife became known as the paratrooper knife or the officer's knife because it tended to end up in the hands of paratroopers and officers and not BAR gunners and not your typical infantry machine gunner and definitely not your truck drivers or your cooks or any of the other rear echelon people. Officers and paratroopers tended to get it, um, which made it uh, a little bit of a problem for my father who was a BAR gunner, but in 1944 instead of getting that knife he ended up getting the M2 fighting knife or Mark II fighting knife which is better known as the Marine Corps K-Bar. Um, my father was in the Army but according to Helm the knives were definitely issued to Army personnel um, because of the shortage of these knives. Uh, the one I have here is made by Ontario in the United States. The knife is also made by Boker in China and some other company from China that is unbranded. Um, the reason I stuck with the one from the United States is number one, it's from the United States. This is a, a World War II fighting knife for American soldiers. I didn't want one made in China. The problem is, as you can see, it says M3 uh, Ontario 1943 on the blade. Ontario did not make this knife during World War II. The, this knife actually started being made by Ontario after the Camillus factory closed in 2007. Um, as such, they used the Camillus sheath, which is a very nice leather sheath, but it's wrong for the World War II period. Um, the leather sheath used with this knife was known as the M6 sheath. It looked more like this big long sheath uh, that is also used with the V42 except uh, it was fitted for the USM-3. Um, what can I say about the Ontario knife? It uses the correct steel, 1095 carbon steel, which means you're going to need to keep it oiled. Uh, it, the blade is the proper length, as you can tell from the M16 bayonet, which uses the exact same blade. Good sturdy leather handles, when I first received it, the handles were a little rough, so I took some thousand grit sandpaper and basically just rolled around on it. And then I soaked it in with a little mink oil, which darkened the leather a little bit, and gave it a much better finish than the original finish. But all in all, uh, it was not a bad knife to begin with, but now it looks much better. Some of the early ones had the crossbar wrong. Uh, but they have the shape of the crossbar correct now. It is actually supposed to be bent at the top so you can press your thumb against it so you can jab better with it. Uh, as you can see, it is full tang. Well, it's known as like a pin tang or, or a, a rat tail tang. tang. It does come all the way through to the back of the, uh, and then it is pinned on. It's very solid build knife. You can't go wrong with it. Very nice, got a nice point to it one and a half this this is sharp this is sharp so if you have regulations against uh, having a double edged knife this is definitely going to be an issue for you but this one is a it's a very solid well built knife the reason i didn't go with the boker is the boker uses 1080 carbon steel so it had the wrong steel uh it you it issued a it came with a cheap plastic sheath as opposed to the the correct M8A1 sheath. 
it looked like the same thing, but it wasn't the same sheath. Having already had one of these, I didn't really need to worry. I've got the correct sheath for the knife. Um, so that's why I didn't go with the Boker. Wrong steel, wrong sheath, and on top of that, uh, it was made in China. I just did not want this classic knife made in China. I wanted a U.S. made M3 trench knife. I couldn't afford the real deal. I couldn't afford one from World War II, but I could afford this one. Uh, it was only about $60. The Boker one was almost the same price. Uh, the other Chinese made one also close to the same price as the Ontario one. That's why I went with Ontario. Uh, I highly recommend it. It's obviously not a modern fighting knife, but it is still definitely a deadly weapon. It's got the beautiful profile to it, wonderful leather handle. You can't go wrong with it. I mean, it might not be a modern knife, but you could definitely, uh, it's definitely a, a weapon of war, and it's an iconic knife. Thank you.